Alright, Shalom, and welcome to another Bible study that Yahweh is then joined unto us here in Stone Mountain, Georgia. My name is Isaac Ben Israel, and I'm the priest of the United Congregation of Israel. And this is our weekly Bible study that we do every fourth day, or as it is commonly known as Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern uh, Standard Time. Um, before we get started, we're going to uh, begin with the prayer. So we're going to face the east. And all males, remove your head covering. And females always pray with their head covered. Abba Father, Most High Covenant Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, we thank you, Yahweh, for allowing this remnant to gather together to read out of this legacy that you have left unto us. We pray, Yahweh, that you would allow your spirit of understanding to be with us on this night so that we may be able to grow out of the things that we read. We also pray, Yahweh, that uh, uh, you would uh, uh, give us a heart of flesh, that we may be able to not just understand the things that we read, but that we may be able to retain these things in our spirits. Because there are many people who read and have knowledge, Yahweh, but it does not affect their walk. We pray, Father, that it not be so with us, that you would allow these things to penetrate our spirits, our hearts, our minds, that we may be able to walk in a way that is pleasing unto you. We ask these prayers not only for those that gather with us physically, but even those that gather by way of phones and by way of internet, those that gather out of a pure heart to serve you in truth and in spirit. In Yahshua HaMashiach's holy and divine name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Um, we uh, um, ended up having a, um, a um, question that um, Sister April sent in uh, talking about the uh, uh, covenant of salt and um, um, it's a good topic to um, uh, discuss uh, we had um, well a few um, uh, questions and we're going to uh, um, deal with those after we deal with this uh, uh, the covenant of salt uh, we're going to begin uh, today in Leviticus chapter 2 Leviticus chapter 2 and we're going to start that at uh, uh, verse 1 and uh, the um, title of today's Bible study will be covenant of salt uh, slash bill of divorce the covenant of salt slash bill of divorce uh, Leviticus chapter 2 and let's uh, start that at verse 1 and when any will offer a meat offering unto Yahweh his offering shall be of fine flour and he shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon now consider when um, um, whenever it's talking about meat it's talking about food not flesh so um, a lot of times in our uh, uh, normal talk, we say meat. We think flesh. Um, that's not what meat means when you're reading uh, uh, the Bible, and you just have to, you know, do a, a, a word study on those things, and then you know, you'll see that each time that it's talking about that. So when any will offer a meat offering unto Yahweh, his offering shall be a fine flour. He shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon. So you're talking about this offering and then consider why there was uh, uh, frankincense and myrrh uh, offered unto uh, um, Yahweh. Um, that uh, uh, those things were uh, uh, given unto uh, the Mashiach. And he of course was that offering. Remember he said unless you eat my flesh and of course he substituted um, the bread for that flesh um, but uh, understand that those things have a, a, a purpose there are we having a problem on the call line? yeah just if you can pull out and pull that alright alright just completely died oh you're not on? And just died as soon as I did that okay um, you know what I forgot to pull out this cord too 
So, um, bear with me, guys. Um, I'm going to have to reconnect on the uh, uh, call line. Go ahead, brother. Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 2. And he shall bring it on to Aaron's sons, the priests, and he shall take thereout his handful of the flour thereof, and of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar, to be an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahweh. Where are you? Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 3. Okay. Go ahead. And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. <clears throat> verse 4. Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 4. And if you bring an oblation of a meat offering bacon in the oven, it shall be of unleavened cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. Now, you consider all of these things that uh, uh, the children of Israel end up eating this manna, this bread from, from, from heaven, and you're talking about these, these offerings. They were given these things and not understanding what these things were. Now, also consider that when, uh, um, you know, people have this thing where, you know, angels don't eat, and you find out, um, they made these angels uh, 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 these unleavened cakes and they ate these things so the belief that angels uh, 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 do not eat um, that is proven to be incorrect uh, uh, in uh, scripture and consider even what the manna was called was it says that the uh, man ate angels food mm -hmm. go ahead Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 4 and if you bring an oblation of a meat offering, bake it in the oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. And if your oblation be a meat offering, bake it in a pan, it shall be of fine flour unleavened, unleavened mingled with oil. You shall part it in pieces and pour oil thereon. It is a meat offering. And if your oblation be a meat offering, bake it in a frying pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. And you shall bring the meat offering that is made of these things unto Yahweh. And when it is presented unto the priest, he shall bring it unto the altar. And the priest shall take from the meat offering a memorial thereof, and shall burn it upon the altar. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahweh. And that which is left of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. No meat offering which you shall bring unto Yahweh shall be made with leaven for you shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering of Yahweh made by fire you shall uh, burn no leaven understand that leaven makes something rise we know that uh, uh, this is synonymous with being puffed up against Yahweh and a lot of people end up uh, dealing with this uh, state of being puffed up against Yahweh um, because they, they even when they want to do works they want to do those works the way that they want to do them, and they don't really see that they uh, uh, that even their offering has leaven leaven in it, because they want to do it, but they want to do it the way they want to do it, you know. Uh, 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 I'll uh, fellowship, but I'm gonna fellowship the way I want to fellowship. I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna do it the way I want to do it, you know. I'll, 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 I'll give to Yahweh, but I'm gonna give the way I want to give to Yahweh, you know. So then there ends up being an offering but that offering has leaven in it and 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 so you have the natural and the spiritual all going hand in hand but the children of Israel didn't understand the spiritual part they could only understand that natural part at that time but Yahweh was already on a whole nother level go ahead Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 12 as for the oblation of the first fruits you shall offer them unto Yahweh but they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet savor. And every oblation of your meat offering shall you season with salt. Neither shall you suffer the salt of the covenant of Yahweh to be lacking from your meat offering. With all your offerings you shall offer salt. With all your offerings you shall offer salt. Now you have, have people laugh about this. That say, you know, that's why we like salt so much, you know. <laughs> because um, uh, 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 all of the offerings were to be uh, 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 offered 
um, um, with this salt and you have to understand all of the multi-purpose um, that this uh, 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 salt uh, has within it uh, but we'll get to that in a minute go ahead I was going to say you also got to consider that our structure is made up of salt so you got to think in the burial when we're put back into the ground mm -hmm. you are the salt of the earth mm -hmm. your body's salt is going back into the ground and we'll, 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 we'll get to that verse 14 and if you offer a meat offering of your first fruits unto Yahweh, you shall offer for the meat offering of your first fruits green ears of corn dried by the fire, even corn beaten out of full ears. Mm -hmm. And you shall put oil upon it and lay frankincense thereon. It is a meat offering. Once again, remember that this frankincense and myrrh is what was offered unto uh, uh, the Mashiach. Um, and he says, I am the real manna from heaven. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Go ahead. And the priest shall burn the memorial of it, part of the beaten corn thereof, and part of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof. It is an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. All right. Now, when we uh, uh, there's a few things I just want to um, mention here in Job six and verse six. It says, "Can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt?" Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? So we understand what this uh, 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 salt does. This salt uh, preserves. This salt uh, adds taste. Um, but when you also look at some of these things, you, you, you see that um, salt is where we get the word salary. People were paid uh, with this uh, that it was a, uh, a precious commodity but then consider all of the things that were told to the children of Israel um, at the destruction of Jerusalem uh, our people ended up being sent to Africa to work in salt mines so you got to consider all of these things that whenever you're dealing with Yahweh there's, 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 there's going to be these wonderful things if you do what you're supposed to do but even uh, uh, when you don't, your punishment is still connected to the very blessing that you got. Understand, it was Canaan land that we went and took. This was the land of the Hamites. This, these were Africans. So ultimately, who did we end up spending the most of our time being uh, 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 under servitude with? It was with the Africans. Yahweh is very poetic. And, and, and not understanding the things that are written in this book, you'll go past some of those poetic things, not understanding that your, your, your punishment is inside of that very blessing because you wouldn't do the things that, that, that you were uh, uh, told to do. Um, let's go to um, Matthew chapter 5. Start that at verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see Elohim. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of Elohim. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Mm -hmm. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Mm -hmm. It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Right. Now, when you read all of these things, these other things are not just up there just to be up there before. Verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. Well, the very things that are before that 
is your saltness. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. When you hunger and thirst for something, you seek for it. See, people say they want certain things. But consider how you go after when you're hungry and you're thirsty. See, a lot of people say they want to do this word. But when you, when you set up Bible study, how many show up? When you set up Bible study, streaming, or calls, how many call in? So when it comes down to those things, there are, are, are people that say that they hunger and thirst. But do you go after it the same way you would uh, 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 other things? So then you find this. It's not just you are this salt. Because understand, salt preserves other things. It, it makes things better. Understand, you make other situations better. If you have all of this saltness, all of these other things are done inside of you. Go ahead. Verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You are the light of the world. So now you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Understand, only these things were these things were only given unto the children of Israel. Uh, uh, only Israel. He says, Israel, you are my witnesses. Israel stood before the mount. It was uh, 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 one of Israel who went and, and dealt with personally with that spirit and brought down this law unto the children of Israel and even Moshe ended up saying uh, uh, Yahweh will raise up one unto you out of the midst of you one of your brethren like unto me who will talk to Yahweh face to face so when you deal with that Israel is set aside and sanctified uh, uh, from all the other nations because the other nations never received any of this and, 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 and that's that uh, uh, thing that really causes us uh, um, the blessing and the curse. Because those things were not given unto the other nations. And then we did not do what we were supposed to do. The other nations saw opportunity and they jumped at it. Uh, when Yahweh ended up disciplining us because of us not doing the things that we were supposed to do. Uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Go ahead, brother. You know, when you look at verse 3 through uh, verse 14 and see all the things that we are, you can understand the statement, don't get weary in well-doing. Right. Right. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. When it's talking about uh, uh, verse 10, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. This is something that people do not want to do. We want to accept the Mashiach dying for our sins. But the first time somebody get their feelings hurt, they on I-95. Kill them. Ain't never been to Florida, but they on I-95. Go. They feelings ain't got hurt yet, but we're willing to accept a sinless man dying for our sins. But the first time we get our feelings hurt, we gone. But we still want to take a hold of this covenant. Yet, when it comes our time to deal with anything out of the way, oh man, we 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 can't we can't handle it. There's a there's a problem there. That is how the salt has lost its savor. See, it's going to accept this and that, but it ain't gonna do none of the other things. Uh 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 uh. To, to stay salted. They want to accept something on one side. But not give it out on the other side. And that's not. Uh, 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 consistent with what's in this word. That is not consistent with what's in this word. See. So you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor. Wherewith shall it be salted. So you just pour a whole bunch of stuff on there. That ain't really going to do anything. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. And uh, um. Start that at verse 1. 
Now Yahweh had said unto Abram, Get you out of your country, and from your kindred, and from your father's house, unto a land that I will show you. Right, that I will show you. A lot of us, we want to know the destination before we even take off. Go ahead. And I will make of you a great nation, and will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. All of this is future. I will. I shall. I will. Go ahead. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curseth you. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. So consider that. If you are the salt of the earth, then you make everything better. Understand, I will bless them that bless you. The blessing is contained in you. Other people get blessed by doing good to you. And other people also get cursed by doing wrong to you. So you have to understand uh, how you're going to carry yourself and what situations you're going to put yourself in. <laughs> See, a lot of these things, we look at them one way, but consider, if you put yourself in a situation for somebody to do something wrong against you, now Yahweh has cursed them, but now what is Yahweh going to do to you for putting that person in that situation? Especially if it was some of your unruliness that put that person in that situation. See, I used to wonder why my elder used to say, I, 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 because of being in this word, he says, Sock, I, I, I learned to, you know, leave people alone. I learned to, to, to stay away from certain situations because what's going to happen is they're going to do something to me and Yahweh going to do something to them. And people don't understand that. So people will jump in, run off at the mouth, not understanding, hey, that's the apple of his eye you saying all of that stuff against. People over here trying to do something. Folks cause some problem. Hey, that's the apple of his eye. Now, the thing that gets confusing to us is even with inside of Israel. Just because you're the apple of his eye don't mean you get to hurt the apple of his eye. See, we have to learn how to treat one another. Then you got the outside nations. I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you. You have to be careful with, with that kind of power. You don't just have a, a, a handgun and then just lay it down in front of a kid. If that kid kill himself, you going to jail. They going to charge you with that because you had that kind of power. Now, that power is legal for you to own. But with that power also comes responsibility. You just going to lay that right there? You see this kid running around, climbing on top of everything, you just going to lay that right there? Then it's your responsibility. Then you are hell. Uh, 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 to blame because of your recklessness of dealing with power. See, that, this is the thing about the salt. See, the salt, you got to learn how to lightly sprinkle it. You understand? See, you, you reckless with that salt. You don't ruin the whole meal now. You don't ruin the whole meal. You don't put too much salt in it. Now, everything else is all null and void because it's too much salt has been put in that meal. You can go ahead and throw that one out. It ain't going to do nothing. You got to start over from scratch. So this is Israel. We have all of these things. We have all of these blessings. But there's responsibility that come with the blessing. You can't be irresponsible with the blessing. And we think we can hang out with anybody. We can kick it with anybody. No, you can't. That's something that I had to learn in this word. I was the life of the party before I got into this word. I had to realize, wait a minute, man, I'm, I'm putting other people in to, to, to uh, uh, situations. And a lot of times I realized that my elder would have conversations with me because he saw other things that I was doing. So then that would bring up conversation. And I didn't hide, you know, what I was doing. And I'm glad I didn't because in that I got chastised or admonished and it caused growth. All the people who took off running... They still the same. 20 years later, my elder dead and gone. They still the same dirt bags they were 20 years ago. They ain't learned nothing. Still doing the same stuff they were doing 20 years ago. Now, I might do some wrong, but I ain't doing the same wrong. I might not do some things right, but I ain't doing the same thing I did 20 years ago. Go ahead, bro. You know what you were talking about with the, the salting. That, that's verse 3 all there. Bless them that bless you and curse them. Right. You got to know how to handle that salt. That's, yeah. that, that's a recipe. 
most people look at the salt part and never consider that well I will bless them that bless you that that's you you are the salt of the earth you haven't seen the, 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 those people they, they 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 walk up and they touch you and and uh, their whole thing is part of the blessing they're hoping mm-hmm. that it rubs off mm-hmm. oh, but, oh my god it just annoys me and they just come up you know white folk would come up and try to rub your head and stuff I was hey 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 man hey 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 Hey, ain't no head rubbing, bro. Ain't no head rubbing. You keep your hand off my head, man. What, what is all that about? But see, that and and I had I didn't understand it until one guy actually came up and he said it while he was doing it. And I I, I actually because he said something, I slowed down and let him rub. All right, well, go ahead, man. I, I appreciate you. Because see, now I understand the rest of all of that. You know, it's like the whole thing of having the 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 undercover rednecks and the, the rednecks who are straight up. I can deal with a straight up redneck. Better than I can deal with them. Hey buddy, hey pal, partner. You know, and that whole time they, you know, uh, uh hate your gut. No, 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 no. I deal with a man straight up better. And I and I've had friends that were redneck and we actually got along better than other uh, uh, black people I know. And the guy, and then they turned around to be like, you know what, man? I I I really like you. I said, yeah, because you was honest with me in the beginning, and I was honest with you, and that honesty built a better relationship than us pretending that, you know, we don't see what each other stand. Now I respect the way you stand. You respect the way I stand. That don't mean I I got to change who I am, and you don't have to change who you are. I respect that. You respect this. We can walk. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? That don't mean that I got to agree with your lifestyle. I respect yours. You respect mine. We're not going to cross those boundaries. That's enough respect that we can walk together. We, 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 we can. Man, I've been able to work with those people and not have a problem. It's those fake ones that you have a problem. And don't get it twisted. You got those more of Israel than you got of other people. Because we have learned the ways of strangers. We have taken the, the the mindset of corporate America, we have brought that uh, 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 home to our uh, uh, houses. Let's go to our Numbers um, chapter 18. <clears throat> See, it's this part that it starts talking about uh, uh, um, the sacrifices that the children of Israel will have to make and you know, we don't see that in um, the whole part of um, being the salt of the earth. We don't see the sacrifice in you just can't do anything. Uh, Numbers 18, and let's start it at verse 1. And Yahweh said unto Aaron, You and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary and you and your sons with you shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood Mm -hmm. and your brethren also of the tribe of Levi the tribe of your father bring bring you with you that you may be joined on that they may be joined on to you Mm -hmm. and minister on to you but you and your sons with you shall minister before the tabernacle of witness and they shall keep your charge and the charge of all the tabernacle only they shall not come near the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar, that neither they nor you also die. And they shall be joined unto you, and keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation for all the service of the tabernacle, and and a stranger shall not come near unto you. And you shall keep the charge of the sanctuary and the charge of the altar, that there be no anger any more upon the children of Israel. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, from among the children of Israel. To you they are given as a gift for Yahweh to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Therefore, you and your sons with you shall keep your priest office for everything of the altar and within the veil. And you shall serve, and I have given your priest office unto you as a service of gift. And the stranger that cometh near shall be put to death. Now you consider the things that uh, uh, were... Uh, uh, written that are written in Romans 9 uh, for the gifts, the promises, the service of Elohim, all of these things were given unto uh, 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 unto Israel. 
Go ahead. Verse 8. And Yahweh spake unto Aaron, Behold, I also have given you the charge of mine heave offerings of all the hallowed things of the children of Israel. Unto you have I given them by reason of the anointing, and to your sons by an ordinance forever. This shall be this shall be yours of the most holy things reserved from the fire. Every oblation of theirs, every meat offering of theirs, and every sin offering of theirs, and every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto me, shall be most holy for you and for your sons. In the most holy place shall you eat it. Every male shall eat it. It shall be holy unto you. Mm -hmm. So then you understand that the children of Israel were set to be a kingdom of priests. So then the, the, the uh, uh, whole of Israel ended up eating this manna. All right. Then you have Yahshua telling uh, uh, first those uh, 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 disciples, um, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part in me. These things you must eat. The sacrifices they had to eat. They didn't understand what was happening. He was the sacrifice. He's saying, you're going to, I'm going to be offered up. You're going to have to eat this sacrifice. Now, of course, then, of course, he uh, uh, substituted that with the bread and the wine. But those who, like I said before, got offended, they lost their saltness. They couldn't stay around enough to stay salted. They were salt because they were with Yahshua. But as soon as they heard something that they were offended by, all their saltness went out the window. Go ahead. And this is yours, the heave offering of their gift, with all the wave offerings of the children of Israel, I have given them unto you, and to your sons, and to your daughters with you, by a statute forever. Everyone that is clean in your house shall eat of it. All the best of the oil, and all the best of the wine, and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto Yahweh, them have I given you. Right. So the priests were supposed to be taken care of. The best of the oil, the best of the wine, the best of the wheat, the first fruits. This is the first of your increase of them which they shall offer unto Yahweh. Them have I given unto you. But do understand also that there was a certain part when you talked about a, a, a lamb per se then uh, the Levites didn't have all of that uh, uh, because, of course, they were spread out amongst the children of Israel. Go ahead. And whatsoever is first ripe in the land, which they shall bring on to Yahweh, shall be yours. Everyone that is clean in your house shall eat of it. Everything devoted in Israel shall be yours. Everything that openeth the matrix in all flesh, which they bring on to Yahweh, whether it be of men or beasts, shall be yours. Right. So this is the firstborn of those things. Go ahead. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shall you surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beasts shall you redeem. And those that are to be redeemed from a month old shall you redeem, according to your estimation, for the money of five shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, which is twenty jiras. So you have to see the, the, the importance that Yahweh is saying all the, the first, the best of everything is going to uh, uh, these priests. So there is a higher standard that they are held by. So whereas other people might get away with doing something, Yahweh going to put it to that priest for doing it. See, people have to understand things go hand in hand. See, you know, you, you, you have more power on the left means you got more responsibility on the right. What we like to do is have the power, but without the responsibility. No, 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 no. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. That's why it says, wait on your ministry. At least you step up in a greater responsibility level and not know it. And that can be very confusing that you, you know, you've done something and, you know, you've done it five, six times and, you know, Yahweh hadn't done anything to you. And then all of a sudden he raises your level up. Then you do it and then an angel just like slams you on your head and you can't figure out why you're having all of these problems. Yeah, because you moved up on the left. Your responsibility was greater on the right. So the things that you used to be able to get away with, you can't get away with those things anymore. See, that, that part was confusing to me. One day my elder got behind the altar and said, uh, Sock, is your fault. 
I was like, what's my fault? That's right. So what are you talking about? It's your fault. What is my fault? Exactly. What are you talking about? Everything, sir. Everything is your fault. I got it. I got it. It was practice. Everything is your Ain't no way well, such and such did that. If it happened under my watch, it's my fault. And if you ain't willing to accept that, you can't be in charge of nothing. Because y'all ain't not going to accept no whole bunch of excuses. Go ahead. Verse 17. Numbers chapter 18 and verse 17. But the firstling of a cow or the firstling of a sheep or the firstling of a goat you shall not redeem. They are holy. You shall sprinkle their blood upon the altar and shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire for a sweet savor unto Yahweh. And the flesh of them shall be yours, as the wave breast and as the right shoulder are yours. All the heave offerings of the holy things, which the children of Israel offer unto Yahweh, have I given you, and your sons and your daughters with you, by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before Yahweh, unto you and to your seed with you. And Yahweh spake unto Aaron, You shall have no inheritance in their land, mm -hmm. neither shall you have any part among them. I am your part and your inheritance among the children of Israel. So you see how Yahweh has has has, has done this. Uh, um, all the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer unto Yahweh. Have I given you and your sons and your daughters with you by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before Yahweh unto you and to your seed with you. And Yahweh spoke unto Aaron, You shall have no inheritance in the land, neither shall you have any part among them. I am your part and your inheritance among the children of Israel. Why do you think churches are uh, tax exempt? This is why. They are not supposed to have any levy placed upon them. Their work is holy. But even within that, you see how Yahweh put that, that balance in there. You shall have no inheritance in their land. Neither shall you have any part among them. You do your job. Because what ends up happening, this is what perverts the job. Because see... Here it is, this man's supposed to be priest among them, and he's getting more and more. They're already giving you the best of all of these things. Next thing you know, the priest got this house and that house and this land and this land. For you know it, he owned the whole countryside. This is what the priesthood has turned into today. This is what it has turned into. So yeah, he has a house, but when you're talking about land and inheritance, you can see how that could grow among them with the best of everything being given to the priest. So we accept one part of it. See, Creflo going to openly tell you, hey, I need that tenth. I need the best of what y'all got. But he's not going to deal with that, that other part. See, they're going to multiply properties. They're going to multiply all of these things with that very uh, uh, money that they receive from those people. We're not talking about money they go out and get on their own. I'm talking about money that they get directly from those individuals. Go ahead. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come near the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear their iniquity. And they shall bear their iniquity. And when you deal with the things that happened when uh, they tried to move that ark and they didn't have the Levites to move it, it was a breach made uh, 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 because it was not done in the due order. Uh, let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 13. Go ahead, bro. Uh, you know, you were mentioning about the priests having all these things. But as you start to gain those things as they do today, then you start to lose the care for the flock. And then the things of this world become more important because now you got to keep up with taxes and what's going on with this property mm -hmm. and what's going on with this. So then the care for the people are gone. Right. It takes a whole lot. Even when it says uh, 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 we were not 
to try to elect someone to rule over us that was not of our brethren. Um, and then um, uh, uh, the king was said not to multiply houses and wives to himself. Then the king was told not to marry, you know, strange wives, which is what Israel was told anyway, because it says that you, these things will turn your heart away uh, 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 from the, the children of Israel. Um, Second Chronicles 13. And let's start that at uh, verse 1. Now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam began Abiah to reign over Yehuda. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. And there was war between Abiah and Jeroboam. And Abiah set the battle in array with an army of valiant men of war, even 400,000 chosen men. Jeroboam also set the battle in array against him with 800,000 chosen men being mighty men of valor. So he has double the amount. Go ahead. And Abiah stood up upon Mount Zemaram, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, Yo Yerboam, and all Israel. Ought you not to know that Yahweh Elohim of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to Dawid forever, even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt? Understand, now you have uh, uh, this... Uh, uh, a son of David that is going to come out of the loins of King uh, 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 Dawi. So you consider what these things are. Now Yahweh made this uh, uh, breach because of the things that uh, uh, Slomo, the natural son of Dawi, did. But this covenant here is dealing with the spiritual son of David as the seed of Dawi would be used to bring forth the body of Yahshua that the spirit of Israel would dwell in. Go ahead. Verse 6. Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Sol Slomo, the son of Dawi, is risen up and has rebelled against his master. And there are gathered unto him vain men, the children of Belial, and have strengthened themselves against Jeroboam, the son of Slomo, when Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted, and could not withstand them. And now you think to withstand the kingdom of Elohim in the hand of his son, in the hand of the sons of Dawi, and you be at great multitude, and there are with you golden calves, which Jeroboam made you for gods. Right. So uh, um, this is part of the the this punishment here that. Uh, even in the Psalms, it is written, you know, when a servant comes to rule. What ends up happening uh, uh, with someone who's not taught about power, they then become reckless with the power. Go ahead. Have you not cast out the priest of Yahweh, the sons of Aaron, and the Levites, and have made you priests after the manner of the nations of other lands? Mm -hmm. So that whatsoever cometh to consecrate himself with a young bullock and seven rams, the same may be a priest of them that are no gods. But as for us, Yahweh is our Elohim, and we have not forsaken him. And the priests which minister unto Yahweh are the sons of Aaron, and the Levites wait upon their business. Mm -hmm. And they burn unto Yahweh every morning and every evening burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. The showbread also set they in order upon the pure table, and the candlestick of gold with the lamps thereof to burn every evening. For we keep the charge of Yahweh our Elohim, but they have, but you have forsaken him. Right, you know, and it's one of these things too, um, because of, uh, um, we did have a, a, a question about uh, uh, the Sabbath uh, as well. And I think a lot of times we get into these things and we forget that the priests are constantly working and doing these things. The priests are not resting on the Sabbath. They have a job to do. So when Yahshua is walking through him and his disciples are plucking this corn, they are doing these things. I think somewhere in the mix there, people forget the priest can't rest. That's not, he has a duty to Yahweh. He has a duty to Elohim. He is totally set aside from that. The Sabbath don't mean to say the same thing to the priest as it means to everybody else. Go ahead. Verse 12. And behold, 
Elohim himself is with us for our captain, and his priests with sounding trumpets to cry alarm against you. O children of Israel, fight you not against Yahweh Elohim of your fathers, for you shall not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them. So they were before Yehuda, and the ambushment was behind them. All right, that's all I want to do right there. Let's go to Mark chapter 9. No, um, Mark chapter 9, and let's start at verse 33. And he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, What was it that you disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. And he sat down, and called the twelve, and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be the last of all, and servant of all. And he took a child, and said, Now, now, if any man desires to be first, the same shall be last of all, and servant of all. For he that is the greatest shall serve everybody. See, a lot of times people are asking for something, but they don't really know what they're asking for. Because, see, people like their personal time. When you're in charge, you ain't got no personal time. My phone rang 2 o'clock in the morning. Folks folks still like their personal time. They still got their personal things that they like to do. Hey, you can trash them personal things. Them little personal things you want to do. I get a call and folks say, hey, man, such and such, such, such in jail. I got to go. Such and such, such, such happen. All right, whatever that was I was going to do, can't do it. And hey, this is also one of the reasons why Yahweh says the priests have to marry certain kind of women. Because you marry the wrong kind of woman for that job, you're going to have hell. Well, such and such and such and such is in need. I got to go. Why you got to always be doing that for them? Oh, man. Now, he, this man, now he got a job. And every time he gets ready to go, she's worrying about her personal time. He got to go here. He got to go there. He got to go check on the flock. Somebody done got into something here. Somebody else needs something there. Somebody else needs something there. It's, it's hard to be married to a priest. That's why Yahweh don't let them marry anybody. Everything look good ain't good. Consider these, these brothers that, that, that are following Yahshua. They can't text their wife here. here. Hey baby, hey, I'm I'm doing good. How you doing? Holler back. What? Go ahead. Mark chapter nine and verse thirty six, and he took a child and set him in the midst of them, and when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them. Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. So, once again, here is the, 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 the real power of this salt of people who are dealing with you correctly have now put themselves in favor with Elohim. This also goes the other way. That people who deal with you wrongfully puts their self put themselves in a bad situation with Yahweh their Elohim and they're not gonna understand it when the judgment come go ahead and Yohanan answered him saying master we saw one casting out devils in your name and he followeth not us and we forbade him because he followeth not us but Yahshua said forbid him not for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to the Messiah, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Mm -hmm. 
And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Right. So, so here it is with that whosoever shall offend one of these little ones. That is causing one of these little ones not to walk correctly in this word. See? So if you hanging out in some places where you ain't got no business hanging out and then one of those people end up making you fall, now those people have gotten themselves in a serious situation, but what kind of situation have you put yourself in by putting them in one? See, the salt works two ways. Go ahead. You know, earlier you were talking about uh, having the right wife for, for the priest. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about it, you've got this call in the middle of the night to go deal with one of the flock. And now you have this salty person. Yes, right. Too much salt. <laughs> yeah. And, and now your head's twisted because now you got this person saltiness on this side, but you still have this matter to deal with. So you can't fully focus on the flock and the job at hand. And what happens if you don't fully deal with that? See? Now you got this person in there, their life's in jeopardy because of whatever situation they're in, but as you're trying to pray for this person, you know, all you hear is, I can't believe, I don't even believe this. I don't believe he gonna lead you this time of night. I don't believe that mess. I don't believe that. Right. So now, all this salt is in the, uh, your, your left ear while you trying to Work with your right side, right? There's a problem. See, so this is, so, but people don't see the spiritual part in that. When Yahweh says, you know, that Israel uh, 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 needs to do things a certain way, because of the the weight that's put on you, you don't need. I mean, you have to consider. I've seen situations where there were women who, you know. Their husband is about to get into an altercation and they're talking the guy down. Then there's those women. If I was you, I'd slap him. Talking the dude into more stuff. And those same after those dudes get locked up, that woman be with somebody else. She don't she don't went on by her way. But she has egged him on to 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 do more evil. See? When you talk about why Dawid loved Abigail. She talked him out of his uh, uh, anger and wrath. He was ready to kill Nabal and everybody he went in contact with. She wasn't even his wife. She talked him out and he said, a wise woman. Once her husband died, he said, uh, go get me that woman. I'm marrying that woman now. Now, did she look good? Yes. But better than that, that woman talked me out of the evil that was in my heart so I would not avenge myself. That's the kind of woman I need. Go ahead. Verse 43. And if your hand offend you, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if your foot offend you, cut it off. It is better for you to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never will be quenched. This ain't talking about your hand and your foot, people. This is talking about your little friends, your friend and friend, friend, friends, who calls you not to do the things that you're supposed to do. But see, it's hard for us to see that because they are friends and we like to hang out with them. Right. Your friends causing you not to. To, to, to have the relationship with Yahweh that you're supposed to have. Now you got to back up to some other stuff that you know. Yahweh is a very jealous Elohim. So how long you think he going to sit there and let you put your friends before him? How long you think he going to take it? He gonna, Yahweh is very patient. He let something go on long enough so that he can prove it's a pattern. But when he get ready to deal with it. He going to deal with it. Yahweh is a very jealous Elohim. And he not going to have you being his servant. And you over Wait a minute. Did you just give your chief time to these people? Did you just give your chief time over there? Oh, okay. But, but, but wait a minute. Now, I thought you said you was my servant. But they get your chief time. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I see he don't think fat me greasy. And so Yahweh. Oh, I'm going to show you fat me greasy. Yahweh will show and prove to you fat me greasy. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was a whole lot of things I had to rearrange in my life. See? Go ahead. 
where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye offend you, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of Elohim with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Now, this right here is is is, is really deep because with some people, it may very well be the closest people to them that is causing uh, 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 their walk to, to, to waver and falter. Go ahead. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Right. Everyone shall be salted with fire. There's this baptism with water, and then there's the baptism of fire. See, some have received their baptism with water, but they haven't received their baptism of fire yet. See? Because, see, the, 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 the fire burns off the impurities. See, precious metals undergo a purifying process of fire. Now, it looked burnt, but when you hit it with that polishing cloth, it gleams. See, it purifies, and it makes it better. And all the impurities are now gone. Only wood, hay, and stubble burns. And it is consumed in the fire. Precious metals are not consumed in a fire. Go ahead. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost his saltness, wherewith shall you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Now you see this? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. Now you go back to all of those things. Blessed is the meek. They shall inherit the earth. And all of these things before it deals with this salt and that you are the salt of the earth. Now it says have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. So there are some things that you have to deal with. Uh, 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 being uh, 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 um, this uh, 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 person of Israel who is uh, uh, the salt of the earth. Let's go to Colossians chapter 4. And uh, start that at verse 1. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Right. So being over someone, um, uh, we cannot rule over people with rigor. Understand that whereas you may be in charge here, sooner or later you're going to get to a place where there's somebody over you. Go ahead. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us, that Elohim would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of the Messiah, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Mm -hmm. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Let your speech be always with grace. So, uh, 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 the brother on the corner who's trying to talk to somebody about the word and then they don't accept the word and then he cuss them out and call them all kind of B's and H's and everything else. What kind of uh, uh, salt is that? That's pepper. That ain't salt. That, 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 that pepper there. That cayenne, Jack. They offer them the word and if they don't accept the word right then, they cuss those folks out. But see, what most people don't know is is uh, those brothers have been made to feel as if they are personally responsible for this other individual's lack of accepting the word right at that instant. Those brothers are taught, and I've had a conversation with one of them, and the brother was saying, you know, we can't leave without agreeing. I, brother, where have you heard that? Who, who told you that? This word, some people have, have, have been in the 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 religion or whatever they've been in for their whole lives you think that you're going to change that in one conversation it may take them a year or two you know to to receive something but that's what makes those brothers angry because their leaders have told them that they have failed if that person does not accept the word immediately so with that kind of weight on younger brothers they then lash out when the people don't accept them right away. So 
uh, uh, those brothers uh, uh, is, is definitely not a thing that should be done but you also have to understand how they have gotten pushed um, into that uh, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 24 Deuteronomy chapter 24 and start that at verse 1. When a man has taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he has found some uncleanness in her. Now, what would be that uncleanness that he has found in her? See, the, 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 in these times, of course, uh, this marriage was supposed to be between a man and a virgin woman. So... If there's some kind of uncleanness there, uh, uh, that whole thing was set to be about uh, some kind of infidelity upon that woman's part. Not this whole thing that we've gotten into, you know, where we have irreconcilable differences. You know, I found out she snored when she sleep, you know, so I'm out. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she's departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, Mm -hmm. may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled. She is defiled because she is lying with another man. Go ahead. For that is abomination before Yahweh. And you shall not cause the land to sin, which Yahweh your Elohim giveth you for an inheritance. Now, you have to consider something. In verse 24, it goes through all of these things, but here's the, the, the back end. And you shall not cause the land to sin. Understand, uh, um, in verse 4, the, 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 the land has now been defiled. By these actions. See people don't understand what the stoning was all about. See first of all the law was written in stone. It was these tables of stone. This punishment was they were stoned. But understand it takes the blood of him that defiled the land. To cleanse the land. That's what the stoning was about. Until the blood of him that defiled the land was shed. The land is still defiled. This is why all the nations got to come up to Jerusalem. This is why all of them have to come up and fight in this battle of Armageddon. This multitude of nations. So basically, rather than, it's not like every nation is going to fit in there. What's going to happen is every nation is going to have their representatives there. They're going to have a coalition army. And each nation is going to have certain people that they have in this fight all of them have to come up to shed their blood because the earth has to be clean from the holy place on down so their blood has to be shed starting there go ahead you know it's interesting you know you'd look at this situation and say how does the land become defiled in such an instance in most places when you go to a place and they have a statute or or something that they put in place they'll tell you hey if I break the rule for you I've got to break it for all so you get people start to see this woman go back to this mm-hmm. her first husband mm-hmm. and other people start to get ideas right now it's spreading like wildfire throughout the land mm-hmm. go ahead verse 5 when a man has taken a new wife he shall not go out to war neither shall he be charged with any business but he shall be free at home one year and shall cheer up his wife which he has taken do I have to explain how he cheered up his wife? Do I really have to explain that? Read, man. No man shall take the nether or the upper millstone to pledge, for he taketh a man's life to pledge. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Come back here. No.
Matthew 5 and start that at verse 31. It has been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Now, it has been said, uh, uh, it was written in Moshe's law, that this is, is, is where this came from. So, if there's going to be uh, 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 an issue, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Go ahead. But I say unto you, uh -huh. that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. See, this is what the power of the baptism is is all about. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication. Now you see, in the beginning it said, for some uncleanness that was in her. See? Yahshua says, if it wasn't that she has fornicated, then you putting her away have caused her to commit adultery. Why? Because she's still married to you. And now she is laying with another man. She is committing adultery. Go ahead. Again. You have heard that it has been said by them of old time. Now hold on, hold on. Let me get this part. And whosoever marry her. That is divorced. Commits adultery. So people don't understand the power of this baptism. And, and being born again. Because of all of those other covenants that we done made before, you know, and being raised up in the daughter of Babylon, we were reckless with those covenants, you know. We have a few glasses of wine and some steak, and we make a covenant. We eat from the left side of the menu, we done made a covenant. We, we, we feel a certain way, we done made a covenant, right? Now, you come into the Word, now you got all these covenants behind you. You got to take care of that. That's what that baptism for. So you got all these covenants lingering. So when Yahshua see you and he said, where is your wife? Will he be talking about that person you with now? Or when he said, where is your husband? Will he be talking about this dude or six, seven dudes before him? Go ahead. Again, you have heard that it has been said by them of old time, you shall not forswear yourself, but shall perform unto Elohim your oaths. Right. That was an oath. See, we don't understand that 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 uh, 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 the covenants. When they made the covenants, they were sealed in blood. They were sprinkled in blood. They sprinkled both the book and the people with the blood uh, uh, dealing with this covenant. People don't understand the act of two people coming together and uh, 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 the, 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 the DNA that is shared there. When, when the hymen is removed out of a virgin woman, the, the blood that comes from that, this covenant that's there. See, people don't deal with that because the church said it's too deep to deal with it. But not dealing with it, you have a house full of hoes. You're going to have to deal with it. But see, this is what you get from these big old organizations where a guy say, oh, you know, you can sleep with everybody uh, uh, in the church. And I mean, we're talking a mega church. This person has four or five churches, some in the state, some out the state. Got $50 million planes and, and can openly sit there and say, you can sleep with everybody in the church. You might lose some things on earth, but you're still going to go to heaven. Now, what incentive is it to do right then? The only incentive is to pay your money. That's the only incentive. I can't understand why there was anybody there after that. You can be with everybody in the church. Everybody and say you can sleep with everybody that come to church. That won't you 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 you're gonna lose some things here on earth. Because you know, so you're gonna be punished here on earth, but you're still going there. Yet this book don't say anything about any of us going there. Go ahead. Verse 34, but I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is Elohim's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. 
but let your communication be yes, yes, no, no, or whatsoever more than these cometh of evil. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if your enemy will sue you at the law, and take away your coat, let him have your, and take away your coat, let him have your cloak also. And whosoever shall compel you to go a mile, go with him too. Give to him that ask you, and from him that would borrow of you, turn not away. Now, can you deal with all of this of the salt? See, can you have that much salt in you, Israel? See, it takes some work to do this. You don't just jump in the water and all this stuff just happen. You, got, you have to work for this. Go ahead. You have heard that it has been said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto, to unto you, love your enemies, Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Because understand something, uh, 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 you have heaped coals of fire upon their head by not doing evil to them. But what we try to do is we're going to get some good back. Do you understand that you are now uh, uh, lightening their load because you have decided to avenge yourself? What Yahweh would have done to them. He ain't going to do it now because of you. Go ahead. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans the same. Understand that that uh, 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 they don't particularly like the publicans, but yet he's still not saying don't speak to them. Man, there's a congregation not less than five miles from here who uh, told everybody in their congregation that they can't speak to me. <laughs> uh, be, be, because we showed that something that they did was not correct. So rather than the brother dealing with it, he just forbid those people uh, 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 to speak to me. So it's okay to be wrong. Don't talk to that brother because, you know, then you're going to know, you know, we're wrong. Man, Israel is something else. Uh, uh, and if you salute your brethren only, now we get to this cult-like antics mm -hmm. that I can't talk to this guy because he doesn't go to the same church that I go to. So now, Israel, see, that's, that's part of my problem with this whole twisted tribal breakdown. Because now you got people that, well, you know, I'm from this tribe and I'm from that tribe. You don't have any idea what tribe you're from. But now you've caused some division with this thing. See, that's what the colonial thing does. Everywhere that, where this, this, this colonization has happened of the Euro Gentiles, there's this division between the people. There's this division between the the the, the lighter skinned uh, 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 blacks and the darker skinned blacks. Now, of course, the favor was shown to the 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 lighter skinned blacks. Of course, they got the inside jobs. You know, they got most of the inside jobs. So there was automatically that favor there. And what ends up happening? There was always this this division, and that division was used. To conquer us and it's still being used this day. If you salute your brethren only. How can somebody be in this word and allow somebody else to tell them. And that's not the only congregation. There was another one. Uh, 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 five, six miles down on the same street that we uh, uh, are on. I mean they eventually moved. But those people. I would see those people. And when I spoke to some of them. They would look around. And I'm like, what are they looking for? You know, they look, they trying to make sure their fearless overlord <laughs> is not there in the presence. So after they look around, I mean, one brother made me think he was slow. I spoke to the brother, brother didn't say that. I'm fake brother looking around, you know. Next thing I know, hey, Shalom, so I, it's so I forgot I spoke to him. By the time he spoke back, I think, is he slow? No, he wasn't slow. He was looking for the fearless overlord. 
See, because he couldn't speak to me if the overlord was watching. See, so he had to look for his fearless. Op- that ain't the word, man. That ain't the word. And people who following that, that ain't that ain't got nothing to do with Yahweh and Yahshua. That's that gang like mentality. And and people who are susceptible to that gang type mentality. That's why they flop. So you you might think, and I used to feel sorry for those people. Then I realized you have to wonder why certain people gravitate to certain things. See, role models are not appointed. They are decided upon by that individual. So if a person wants to, to, to be a clean comedian, then his role model would be somebody like Bill Cosby. Somebody who wants to be a dirty comedian, his role model would be Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor. But you see, he picked his own role model. You understand that? It wasn't assigned to him. He picked them based upon his own liking. So I used to feel sorry for those people, but then I thought, no, they picked him to rule over them. Right. It was something in their spirit that matched that thing. Go ahead, brother. Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And we know that there's nothing perfect of the flesh, but we know that we can give it a perfect try. Let's go to to chapter 19. And we're going to start that at verse 1. And it came to pass that when Yahshua had finished these things, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Now listen, listen to the question. Not is it lawful for a man to put away his wife. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? See, what is your cause? See here, hey, hey, we, hey they have you know irreconcilable differences. You can have a divorce here that says that the marriage never even happened. You have a a a a a. A disappearing divorce. I, I, well, I like to have disappearing divorce. What's that? I just like her to disappear. I just, I just uh, zip tang. I want. I, I, matter of fact, I bought some smoke balls here, and I want you to drop them right over here, and, a, poof, and I want her to be gone, like it never happened. Just totally expunge. Let's wipe it off the record. It never happened. There are divorces where people say, "Okay, uh, uh, I don't want it to be." I remember her brother and the sister was getting. Uh, uh, a divorce at this same congregation where the people said uh, they couldn't speak to me um, that nobody wanted to take blame so you know they wanted to have the divorce said that you know well my fault wasn't your fault it was just you know we just agreed to go a uh, 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 separate separate ways and of course there were issues on both sides and, and, and both people doing whatever it is they wanted to do but none of them wanted it listed on the piece of paper <laughs> as if Yahweh is bound or can't deal with you if it ain't on the piece well see well, it ain't on the piece of paper so I can't I, <laughs> Yahweh ain't got you, 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 you relating Yahweh and man that's something altogether different altogether different uh, Matthew chapter 19 and let's uh, uh, where you at now verse 4 verse 4 go ahead and he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Mm-hmm. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh? Mm-hmm. Now we have no problem becoming one in the flesh. We have a problem becoming one in spirit. Well, we join and do things hand in hand. See? And... Understanding that the man is the head of the house, this ends up causing some some problems um, within that walk because people are not wanting to become one spiritually. Go ahead. Wherefore there are no more two but one flesh. What what therefore Elohim have joined together, let no man put asunder. Right. 
So now he got a question. Well, wait a minute, man. You're going against the law. Because, you know, you have those that are straight letter of the law and they can't see the spirit in the law. And the spirit of the law was always there. Go ahead. They say unto him, Why did Moshe then command to give a writing of divorce and put her away? He saith unto them, Moshe, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Right. Because of the hardness of your hearts. Because if, if, if people are in situations that they don't want to be in, they end up having this thing where now they're putting their hands on one another. And now they're dealing with people uh, 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 in, in, the, in the wrong manner. He said, because of the hardness of your heart, give them a writing of divorcement and let them go about their way. Go ahead. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. Now, you have to look at this equation. This is an a, a equation. What people just say, um, uh, um, whosoever, uh, uh, it says, uh, 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 whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committed adultery now you have to consider the way that most marriages are done in christendom they never count any marriage except the one that they're with so they can divorce as many times and get remarried and the only thing that count is the one that they with now now consider what yahshua says this is completely opposite whosoever shall put away his wife now why first of all we have to deal with the fact that they don't say putting away the husband the man is the one that can file for divorce not the woman see i try to explain that to sisters when they you know just see somebody be like oh he's so fine i want to be with him do you understand what's going on here do you understand what's written in this word you might want to have a little bit more than he's so fine i want to be with him He files for divorce. Now, except it be for fornication, and he marries someone else, he has committed adultery. Now, he has married somebody. This is exactly what happens in Christendom all the time. They divorce from one person and marry somebody else. They are in complete adultery. Yet, they have a marriage certificate on the wall, and you can't tell them jack. You can't tell them nothing. They feel just as justified than my husband. Right. You believe that. See, then you have to go back to what uh, 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 the Messiah ended up uh, uh, saying to the woman at the well. Woman, where's your husband? And, and, and she said, you know, what, 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 I, I, I don't have a husband. He said, you've rightly said that what you have said. For you've had five husbands and the one you have now is not yours. So the, 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 the key part, you have had and the one that you have. So she was currently had a friend with benefits, you know. So she don't see that as a husband. So it lets you know, Yahweh not counting certificates on the wall. See, that ain't what he counting. See. But that, that's not what has been given to us. And because the church won't deal with it, it is causing all of these issues. And the church don't want to deal with it. They ain't going to do nothing but lose money talking about this stuff. You think people trying to knock down my door after I read this? Hoes don't want to come here. Hey, man, I can't be a whore. Well, well he, he's not going to try to, he gonna try to water me down. I'm trying to be on fire, you know. So that they don't want to come here. Because understand something. There are congregations where those brothers just trade those women around like cookies. They go in there. Uh, here go your bill of divorcement. Then she in that house with the brother on the second row. Then she jumped. Now she in the house, uh, uh, you know, on the same row, another brother. Then jumped down to the other row. Now she with that brother. And all of that is completely legal in their thing. Because each one of them gives her a bill of divorcement. And she just been passed around like cookies throughout the same congregation. And there are Hebrew congregations who operate like that. Those people don't like me very much. But go ahead and get your practice on because you're not going to like Yahshua either. So go ahead and get practice. Practice on me as, as it is written. Yahweh remember me because I've been made to bear the indignation of those that hate you. 
And that's all it is. The people, they have issue, they have issue with Yahweh's word. And what they do is easier to project that hatred toward me because ain't nobody going to be bold enough to say, you know what, I got a problem with you, Yahweh. Now, you know what, I got a problem with Esau. Right. It's much easier to say you got a problem with Esau. No, but, but man up. Say who you really have a problem with because this is not my word. I'm just reading it. I didn't write any of it. Go ahead, brother. You know the lady at the well, when he asked her the question, and she said, I have no husband. Mm-hmm. Lie. Well, but but she, he, she didn't under... You, you have to wonder, what was she thinking? Right. What did she consider him exactly. to be? Exactly. Exactly. That See? is what I was getting at. Exactly. What did she consider him to be? A, a friend with <laughs> benefits. A man friend. Boy Unho friend. Unholy mattress Which moment. Is no such thing as right. a boy There's friend. No, there's no such thing as a girlfriend and a boyfriend in Hebrew Israelite community. And it's funny. Because when I first came in the word, there was these people who said that they were boyfriend and girlfriend for nine years. <laughs> and I said, and I was sitting there. I was just sitting. I was, I was in the church confused as I'll get out. I said, you know, I, I'm confused. Elder. How is somebody in this word and they... Boyfriend and girlfriend for nine years. And you know, Elder had a tendency to answer questions right away without answering them. Right! <laughs> you know, that was his <laughs> That was his first thing. Now, it's not I can't say what he told me <laughs> after that. <laughs> but he went deep into that after that. But I can't use those words on that. <laughs> But we had a lot of personal conversations, and I really appreciate him being real with me. And that part, I can't say. But he let me know, uh, that brother's a whore. Mm -hmm. and, and playing this girlfriend thing gives him the ability to be a whoremonger and jump from place to place. Because in his mind, he's not tied to this woman. Well, what Yahshua says is completely different. Go ahead. And whoso marrieth her which is put away does commit adultery. Verse 10. Now, whoso marries her that has been put away commits adultery. So, if people want to deal with this writing of divorcement, do you understand? Everybody who touches you then commits adultery. Why? Because you're supposed to be with that other one. Right. I keep telling people, you better do more than, he's so fine. You better, hey, you better do something. And the same thing for brothers. Same thing. You know, this, 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 that we need to pay attention to the things that are, that, that are written in this, in, in, in this word. Now, we know that uh, 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 there's no perfect path and we may fall, but you can't keep falling the same way. You got to figure out another way to fall. I may fall five times, but why I fell on the same step? Is something wrong with that step? Or something wrong with the way you step? How you keep falling on the same step? But what's this? That is a marriage step. How you keep falling on that step? Why you ain't, why you ain't fall on the other step over there? They got a stealing step over there. Why you ain't fall on that, fall on that one? They got a lying step. You ain't fall on that one? So you fall on the same step every time. Something wrong with your footing. Because I, I, I looked at that step. That step is perfectly level. That's perfectly level. That is just. How do you keep falling on the same step? Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, it goes to show you how the sanctity of marriage has no respect. No. Because you can look before even this law was laid down in, this, in the situation of Abraham and Sarah. When he said, why did you say she was your sister? Mm -hmm. The law wasn't even in place yet. Right. But there was thought process in people's head that look. This belongs to that man. You leave that alone. And they were upset about that. Why you tell me this? This this, this, this was your. I mean, they, he was upset. Mm -hmm. So even amongst the heathen, the heathen has a code. Let's go to Matthew chapter twenty-two. And we're going to start that at verse 24. Matthew 
chapter 22 and verse 24, saying, Master. Uh, verse 23. Verse 23. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him. So the question is about the resurrection, but they're using other things to... to bring about this question so they they figure this is going to prove your resurrection wrong go ahead saying master moshe said if a man die having no children his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed onto his brother now understand something now what we just read before uh 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 that this 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 woman has to stay with this man Right here, he's saying if a man die having no children. Of course, now this woman is loose from marriage because her husband is dead. His brother shall marry his wife. Now, there's no stipulation. That's that point blank. It don't matter whether he already had a wife. This is his duty to raise up seed unto his brother. And when it came down to it, <coughs> even when you deal with Boaz and Ruth, um... The other brother didn't want to do it. The one who was nearest to Ken before Boaz. He said what? Man, I can't, man. I have already set my inheritance. Because once he did it, that means he already got a wife. He already got kids. He has already parted his inheritance. Once he marries her and raises up seed for the deceased brother, the inheritance changes. So he didn't ask him. Now, if there was not any, if Boaz didn't want to take that, do you understand that that brother would have would have had a bad name in Israel? He would have been known as the man with his shoe loosed. So somebody had to take on that responsibility. Now, you got people that won't deal with this in no kind of way. It said if a man die having no children, because people will run up and say, well, you need to marry me because cause, cause I was married to your brother. You see them little cheering right now? You see them cheering? Then your chair. Now I'm gonna need you and your little snotty old chair and get on up out of here now. <laughs> Go on up out of here now. You, you ain't read that right. You ain't read that right. Go ahead. You know, and, and like you're stating here with this, he already has a wife. It ain't saying he divorcing his wife and marrying his Exactly. Whosoever listen, whosoever divorce his wife and marries another commits adultery. Yet they're saying here he has a wife, but he better marry. The woman that was left, the woman stays in the family. Man, they would call this woman all kind of names. She done been with how many brothers? Oh, that is beneath me. That's mm. just nasty. Right. Go ahead. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, no children, left his wife onto his brother. Uh huh. Likewise, the second also, and the third, onto the seventh. Now, you know this woman is, is called all kind of names at, at, at the second one. Much less the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. They have called this woman all kinds of names. Go ahead. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of, of the seven? For they all had her. Yahshua answered and said unto them, You do err. Not knowing the scriptures nor the power of Elohim. Right. Now, hey, hey, the law going to be nailed to the cross. So you ain't got to deal with this. And it's funny because now most people uh, uh, call themselves African Americans. Do you understand that that is, uh, is an African uh, uh, way of life? That is part of the African culture. That they automatically do the very thing that we just said. If the brother die, the other brother marry that woman we call ourselves so-called african-american that's an african uh, uh, uh part of the african culture see people people like to to take bits and pieces of of something and that's how we end up worshiping all these twisted things and having this twisted worship of of, of other gods because we do what the euro gentiles did when they invaded places they went if they like certain things, they're like, oh man, you got a cool God. This is a, a Jeff, the God of Biscuits. We like him. We're going to take him to be one of our gods. Then they go to somewhere else. Oh, we like this God. Let's merge these two. That's why some things you'll find, wait a minute, the God got different names? Yeah, because as they invaded that place, they said, man, I like this God. This God is cool. So what y'all do? Y'all So y'all just put up a green tree and then get drunk 
Oh man, I need this. I'm I'm bring this God in. Bring this God in. So now Christianity has all the gods in it. These were the various places that they invaded and to make those people feel like they had a, a part so that they wouldn't revolt, bring your God in, we'll worship your God too. But we'll call it all the same name. See? But we're gonna worship your God too. Go ahead. You know, even when you look at some of the people like our grandmothers, their their age group, mm -hmm. our great grandmother's age group, and you dig, some people don't want to dig far enough in the, in, into their family history, you'll see that grandma took care of some other kids that grandpa had with some other woman, mm -hmm. and all them families used to get together and stay together. Yep. Yep. But we have gotten so far mm -hmm. detached from that kind of living is 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 part of what this uh, uh uh the daughter of babylon in making uh um this independent you do your own thing you don't need this you don't need that you can do this you can do all of this by yourself blah 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 and when you watch even all of the 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 uh, uh television programs these are television programs that our children are sat in front of their design is to destroy the black family mm -hmm. point blank every which away these ideals that 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 are are, are, are given unto us is for our destruction go ahead Matthew chapter 22 and verse 30 for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of Elohim in heaven. Now, the Enoch brothers, they don't like this verse. Mm -hmm. They do not like this verse. They are mad at me every time I read this verse. Angel dead. Sleep with women. I mean, and these brothers be arguing about it like they was there. I was there. I was in the room with Gabriel and Keisha. Yeah, whatever, bro. I mean, they be upset, <laughs> Jack. Because it, it, it goes against everything that that they are trying to deal with. In their little make believe world, they want to deal with uh, uh, this 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 book of Enoch. They want to deal with that they've dealt with these angels. They want to deal with that because it's this mysticism. See, it's this part of I can deal with the word, but I can deal with this fantasy too, and this gives them that opportunity. So they don't like this. Yahshua is saying that the angels don't marry now. Not marry like uh, I do, you mm -hmm. do, we did, we done. No, no. Marry like Esau took Rebecca into his mama's tent and she became his wife. Do we have to discuss what happened in the tent? Go ahead, bro. You know, and, and just like you're stating, even with the I do in front of the priest, you wake up two days later and say, I don't like her. Go down to the court. Uh -huh. I don't want a, a, a right? divorce. They say, was the marriage consummated? Right. They ask you that question. Because that's the marriage. Exactly. You may, in, in, in this book, there is a marriage and then there's the wedding feast. The, 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 the marriage takes place between them. The wedding feast is an announcement to other people. People have gotten it twisted and think the wedding feast is the wedding. No, the wedding is what you call the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, we got it all twisted. That's not the way that works. Go ahead. You know, it's really funny. And further confirmation about that comes forth, you know, when you read 1 Corinthians um, 6 and 16, where it says, don't you know that he that joins to a harlot is one body for he said two shall become one flesh mm -hmm. they don't realize that if a man can do that with a harlot mm -hmm. you know I it, it's telling you about that that is that joining that is that covenant that you're making mm -hmm. in that particular thing and it is very interesting and in, in what brother Kish had, had mentioned that they will automatically just do away with that covenant because what you made you made an agreement you know, that was a covenant. Y'all both agreed, blah, 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 blah. But that agreement was not sealed in blood. Mm -hmm. You ever notice that 
a lot of the times they'll seal something and they'll stamp it and it'll be a red dot red on it. You never notice what that red seal was? That's to symbolize it being sealed in blood. Right. See, we, 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 there's a whole lot of stuff that happens around us and we really don't pay attention to it. But it was always, and sometimes they would just pour some ink, red ink on it. You'll see a stamp, a seal, and then a little piece of, of ink that's just running on the paper and they let it dry up just like that. It was sealed. Go ahead. Verse 31. What is touching the resurrection of the dead? Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by Elohim, saying, I am the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Esau, and the Elohim of Yaakov? Elohim is not the Elohim of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. Right. They were astonished at this uh, 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 doctrine because he was dealing with the spirit of the law. Uh, uh, and in many cases, the spirit of the law magnified the law and made it even more difficult. See, people like to think, you know, the spirit of the law is you don't have to do everything in the law. The spirit of the law is very interesting because the spirit of the law and sometimes in some cases makes things easier. In other instances, it makes it more difficult. It said you, you know, uh, 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 if, if you took something, blah, blah, blah. It says, hey, if, if, if you have uh, 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 desired something that that you know you coveting something that belongs to your brother you are sinning in that is giving you an opportunity to judge yourself of that thing before you commit that action so the the the, the spirit of the law in some instances made it took a weight off of us but then it put more spiritual responsibility mm -hmm. uh there Go ahead. And the, the topic that we're talking about, you know, adultery and fornication, it tells you exactly that. That a man or woman who commits that lust in their heart, they're guilty of it already. Because it's something you can see in your thoughts and in your mind before you actually commit the act. Right. It's giving you an opportunity right. to, 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 to fight uh, um those things because as you know my elder would say that those thoughts are living entities and a lot of times you know you end up uh, uh fulfilling those now there are certain things that are that are thoughts that are just uh, uh thoughts and some are hard to get away with or, or get away from some are harder than others um and a lot of that is by the things that we feed ourselves with there are a lot of things you have to consider there are things on television man i gotta switch that's press this switch man and it turns off certain uh, uh televisions there's some things man that come on tv man that you just got to turn the thing off man and clear the children out the room well that's just not affecting their thought process it's affecting yours too you know so you have to be mature enough to be able to watch certain things without it affecting you and some people think that something is not affecting them only to find out two, three weeks to a month later that it did affect them. Uh, let's go to Jeremy, uh, Jeremiah uh, chapter 3. Uh, started at verse 1. They say, If a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man, shall he return unto her again? They say, is once again, coming directly from the law. Okay? Uh, it says that once you gave a woman a bill of divorcement, you are not to return unto her again. That was the letter of the law. Yahshua said some other things. Let's see what's, what, what's going to happen here. So, so you can see the spirit of the law was always there. They just didn't understand it. So, yes, if a man's wife went aside from him, he could put her away. Could. That don't mean he had to. He could forgive her. That is completely within his grounds to forgive her. Go ahead. 
Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But you have played the harlot with many lovers. Mm -hmm. Yet return again to me, saith Yahweh. Right. So Yahweh said, hey, I've had to deal with it. So what's the problem? You've done this to me. Remember what I said about, you know, uh, uh, people giving all their chief time and all their things to their other friends. Remember something. Yahweh is a very jealous Elohim, and he'll deal with it up to a certain point. Go ahead. You know what's the hardest thing with human beings? We'll do something and be fine with it, but don't like it when it's done to us. Right. But see, that's how Yahweh brings righteous judgment is he'll let it happen and it won't be the same people that we did it to see so we'll jump up in somebody else's face Yahweh won't have that person jump in your face you'll go down the street somewhere else and somebody else will jump in your face see that's your opportunity to see oh okay yeah see what what I what I did then that was wrong that was now some people that'll never come to their mind I can't believe this person jumped in my face <laughs> can you back up just two weeks can you remember that you jumped in this other person's face over here you don't, you don't remember that at all? You don't remember that at all? See, that's why some people can never deal with righteous judgment. Because they don't see it when it happened to them. That's why it happened to you. So that you can see how that person felt. Go ahead. Lift up your eyes onto the high places and see where you have not been laying with. In the ways have you set for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. And you have polluted the land with your whoredoms and with your wickedness. You have polluted the land. Once again, I, 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 people are not understanding. They have uh, uh, gay parades that are like festivals in Israel. Do you not understand how the land is polluted? And people say, I'm going to Israel. You go ahead. <laughs> you go. I'm staying the daughter of Babylon where she knows she a hoe. <laughs> Last thing I need to go somewhere where, where the folk don't know they hold. They also you they, they think they holy land. All the L and the Y done fell off. <laughs> go ahead. Therefore the showers have been withholding, and there has been no latter rain. Mm -hmm. And you have had a horse forehead. You refuse to be ashamed. I ain't gonna be ashamed. Uh, a horse forehead is covered. So you can't see her forehead. So she has no reason to be ashamed of anything. Because she thinks nobody sees my actions. Go ahead. Will you not cry from this? Will you not from this time cry unto me? My father, you are the God of my youth. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, you have spoken and done evil things as you could. Yahweh said also unto me in the days of Uzziah the king. Have you seen that which backslide Nishra has done? Mm -hmm. She's gone up, up on every mountain and under every green tree, and there has played the harlot. Right. Your Christmas tree is way before any part of Christ. They worship those evergreen trees. Go ahead. And I said after she had done all these things, turn you on to me. So still after she committed adultery, mm -hmm. he asked her to come back. Go ahead. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Yehuda saw it. And I saw, when for all the causes whereby backslide Nishra committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Now, people see that part, but they missed the line before where he knew she had been with, with uh, 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 others instead of her husband. And he asked her to come back. She refused. Then he gave the bill of divorce. See, people don't see that part. They see, oh, she did so. Bill of divorce. Give me a pen. Give me a pen. I'm gonna write it out. Yes, I'm gonna write it out. Yes. Where is the pen? That's not what he said. That is not verse seven. And I said after she had done all these things, not all this thing. She didn't do one thing. She did these. That's plural. These things. Turn you on to me. Asked her to come back. She said no. Then he gave the writing. See, people think that they, they, they hand in hand with Yahweh. No, you ain't. Go ahead. You know, even in this statement here, we see what we were talking about earlier where he already had the wife. 
his brother's sister, his mm-hmm. brothers died and left a wife. Uh huh. What did y'all always say? Her treacherous sister, you who saw it too. Mm-hmm. I'm married to her too. Right. Right. I'm married to both of them. But see, people don't understand what those two wave blows are all about. They really don't understand. They don't. They don't, really don't understand what Leah and Rachel represented. See, they they don't really get that part when they're dealing with this. Yahweh is dealing with the prophecy of the children of Israel and the divided kingdom because it ended up being a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom, a divided house in Israel. So these things are are are, are fit mm-hmm. prophetic visions of the children of Israel. Go ahead. Yet her treacherous sister Yehuda fared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land. She defiled the land with her whoredom. Why do you think we have to go and do the things in the the, 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 the land of Israel that we have to do? People think, okay, the land, once holy, always holy. That's why you got some strange people around here now. Because they think, you know, hey, I, I got in the word. I'm straight. I got my baptism. I'm straight. So once holy, always holy. You believe that if you want to. That's what people think about the land. The land is holy. That's what people think about their church. There are people that think, this is the place where I heard the word. So it's always holy. Let me tell you something. The day that they take a left turn from Yahweh's word, the holiness went right out the door. There's a whole lot of unholy in the so-called holy land. So blood going to have to be shed there to make an atonement for those sins and put that land back in the perspective that it's supposed to be in. But Jake just think he just goes there and it's all, it's perpetually holy. You believe that if you want to. Go ahead. And committed adultery with stones and with stocks. Now, Jeremiah is a prophet, right? Uh Uh-huh. Stone is Islam. Right. Stocks is Christianity. Right. During this time, there was no mosque there. Mm -hmm. And there was no Christian church in the land. Right. So this is going way above what he even could see. Way above. And... Jeremiah 10, brother, he's describing a Christmas tree. Wasn't no Christmas. <laughs> so they was worshiping something else, but Yahweh made sure he put all them things there because they're going to be doing this for a long time to come. Mm-hmm. It even describes what my living room used to look like. It said they have an evergreen tree and they spread it with silver and gold. I used to have that tinsel all over my floor. We used to have to vacuum that tinsel up because it'd be little, little sheets of of, 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 of silver and gold you, after you decorate the tree you just throw it on the tree all round about mm-hmm. right you can read in here before Christ is on the scene and give you a description of a Christmas tree that let you know it ain't got nothing to do with Christ go ahead verse 10 and yet for all this her treacherous sister Yehuda has not turned on to me with her whole heart but faintly right you Fain can't fake you can't fake at repenting you cannot fake at repenting when it comes down to Yahweh <clears throat> but there's there's a reason why I wanted to to <clears throat> to read that because people really think that they're doing Yahweh's will with this whole bill of divorce Yahweh asked his fornicating wife to return unto him let's go to Romans chapter 7 I mean, consider how many things that we've done and if Yahweh cut us off for, for every last one of them. At what point do we apply any uh, 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 mercy to our situation? Romans chapter 7 and let's start that at verse 1. Know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. I speak to them that know the law. He ain't saying nothing about you. Well, you y'all know the law nailed to the ground. Go ahead. How that the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Uh huh. For the woman which has an husband is bound by the law to her hu- is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. Right. What did those old marriage certificates say? Till death do us part. Till death do us part. 
That's what the thing. And people all the time want to show you their little certificate. Well, what happened to the dude before this one? Is he dead? No, he lay down the street. Go around that corner over there. Oh, okay. He, he just dead to you. Oh, okay. Go ahead. But if the husband be dead, she's loose from the law of her husband. She is loosed from the law of her husband. Go ahead. So then, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. See, you go back to the other things that were written before. It says, if a man divorce his wife for any other reason other than uh, 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 fornication, and and if, if, if he divorced this woman, he has caused her to commit adultery. Because everybody that is with her at that point is committing adultery. Why? Because she still belongs to him. Go ahead. But if her husband be dead, she's free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of the Messiah, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that he would bring forth fruit unto Elohim. Right. Uh, 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 that you should be married unto another. Understand, uh, uh, Yahweh says he is married unto Israel. So there is a, 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 a different way that we are to uh, uh, um, deal with this. Um, um, keep reading, bro. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we're delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Not in the oldness of the letter, but in the spirit of the law. Go ahead. You know, in verse 4, where it says, Wherefore, my brethren, you are also become dead to the law by the body of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand, that's through your baptism. But see, but I, I, and I, I, was, I, I was waiting for you to get a little bit further down, and I'm going to jump back up. Uh, uh, to four because there's something else you are dead to the law by the body of the Mashiach because uh, that's dealing with sacrificial law and the work that he did and you are baptized into his death go ahead verse 7 what should we say then is the law sin uh -huh. Elohim forbid no I had not known sin but by the law right for the definition of sin is a transgression of the law. So if there is no law, there can't be any sin. So how can you convict me of any ill doing then? Go ahead. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, you shall not covet. Right. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, and sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy. The law is holy. And the commandment holy. The commandment holy. And just, and good. Mm -hmm. Was then that which is good made death unto me. Elohim forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, Working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Right. We know that the law is spiritual. And this has always been. This is not a new thing that this spirit of the law is just there. There's more understanding or uh, more opening up to the spirit of the law but that spirit of the law was always there but the carnalness of the children of Israel did not give us the opportunity to uh, 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 receive that at uh, uh, that time uh, that's all that we're going to do for uh, tonight let's uh, leave out with the prayer We are going to uh, face the east. And all males, remove your head covering. And females always pray with their head covered. Abba Father, Most High Covenant, Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov.
We thank you, Yahweh, for allowing us this opportunity to read out of this legacy. We, we, we truly thank you, Yahweh, for uh, preserving this legacy for us. For we did not do the things that we were supposed to do, and we did not preserve our legacy. Now, Yahweh, we have to watch as other people take a hold of our legacy and misteach it back onto us. We pray, Father, that you would bring forth workers to work in your vineyard, that we may be able to uh, 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 explain to your children that this is their legacy and that others have mistaught it unto them. We pray, Yahweh, that you would allow us to receive these things that you have opened up unto us, uh, that we receive these things in our hearts, our minds, and our spirits, and we pray, Father, that these things would direct our steps. We ask these prayers not only for those who gather with us physically, but even those that gather by way of phones and by way of internet, those that gather out of a pure heart to serve you in truth and in spirit. In Yahshua HaMashiach's holy and divine name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Hallelujah.